Everyone deserves a second chance, or is it too little too late? Will these molds be as sweet as toffee, and will they break the mold? You might ask, is round two really the electric boogaloo, or is there too much hype? I've been wondering that too. But there's only two ways to find out, so without anything further to do, let's get back to the show. If the intro wasn't evidence enough, today is round two for Sophie and Toffee's improved dice molds. I reviewed their original seven die dice mold set a while back and I wasn't terribly impressed. I recently ordered a few other molds from them like their dice vault mold and their mini dice molds and so I thought I would go ahead and order this set so that I could give it a second chance because they've supposedly made a lot of improvements to it based off of suggestions from me and other people who've reviewed them. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if those improvements are actually worthwhile. For the full set of seven dice molds, it's going to run about 45 bucks, and each mold comes in two parts for each size die. That's a typical cap mold setup, and at first glance, that does look like they made quite a few improvements. They put a little lip around here so that all of your excess resin has a place to go, and that the lids will actually stay in one place. They also put a registration mark or a key on the top and on the bottom so that hopefully your lid will lock into place, and that way the numbers don't get kind of off-centered, which was a common problem before. They also added a sprue hole to the lid, making this a cap sprue combo mold, and the lid is about twice as thick as it used to be. A lot of these are great improvements, but some of them they only kind of went half cocked into the idea, so it didn't really do anything for those, such as the registration marks here. They're so tiny that they're really not going to do anything for you, and I'll explain that a little bit more as we go through the video for why I really don't think that those mattered. But remember, in all of this, your mileage may vary. People had success with their old molds, I just didn't like them. But enough talk, let's test the molds. I'm going to use Envirotech's Light Resin which is a two-part resin that is a one-to-one -one by volume mixture. I'm also going to be testing this with UV resin later, but it says you can use both, so I'm definitely going to test it with both AB resin and UV resin. This first dice set, you might actually recognize the colors because I'm making it at the same time that I was making the gold and pink dice vault from my previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up the resin and separate it into two parts, one of which I'm going to add some silver liquid glitter additive, and I'm also going to add two sheets of this pink leafing foil. You could absolutely just use glitter or mica powder instead, but I like this leafing foil because it kind of bends where glitter won't normally do that. It stays pretty straight, so you get a lot of weird light effects inside your dye or whatever you're making with resin. For the other half of the resin, I'm going to use this King Tut Gold Mica Powder from Mad Micas. Mad Micas sources their mica powder ethically because a lot of them use child labor and that's a bad deal. So we are going to try and use good mica powders as often as we can. After we have all of our resin prepped and ready to go, I can go ahead and get the molds ready. I set them on a large piece of wax or freezer paper every time I use them because you're absolutely going to spill whenever you're using cap molds. For the technique that I'm using here, I'm just doing a three layer kind of technique. It will basically swirl on its own as you let it sit there. So I'm going to do a layer of the clear pink one, a layer of the gold, and then a layer again of the clear pink foil one on top. These will kind of blend on their own so you don't really have to worry about blending them, though you can if you want. Whenever you're using cap molds like this, you always want to overfill it so that there's excess resin on top and the little lip that it has to help keep the lid locked in place is actually really helpful for this so mad props to that one because I think that is a great idea. As you're pouring these in you also want to make sure that you have some excess resin to put on the underside of the lids which is the part that you'll put on the top of the mold that way there's no air bubbles that can get stuck down in there on the numbers that are on top that's just something you should always do as a precaution. I always take a lighter and go over the top of the resin as well to pop any surface bubbles because with cap molds surface bubbles can cause some problems. Now comes time to put the lid on the actual molds, which there's a few problems here. One, the lips aren't all that big, so they don't really actually add any help to putting the lids on or keeping them on there, but mostly it's the registration marks or the keys. They're so tiny and so thin that you cannot find them or actually lock them into place at all, which means they're basically useless. And because they're so thin and so tiny, I can't see where they are when I'm looking down through the resin, so I hope you remember which direction you're supposed to be putting your lid on unless you made a mark on there, which I will do later to improve upon these. After the lids or caps are on the molds, I'm going to go ahead and put the resin inside of a pressure pot for the resin to cure in. You don't need to do this, it just helps reduce bubbles and gives me transparent dice. I'm going to put it at 40 psi and leave it in there for 24 hours, which is twice the cure time of this specific resin, so they are definitely cured. After the resin is done curing, we can take them out of the mold, and the very first one that I opened up has a giant air bubble inside of it. Now, why is that? We have improvements. There's even a 
sprue hole on the top for excess resin to go down in there. Why is that causing a problem? Well, this comes down to, again, this is a halfway done idea. The sprue doesn't actually have a reservoir to pull resin from, so there's no resin to actually go and fill those voids that are created when the bubbles are gone from using the pressure pot. The sprue may have enough excess resin to fill up the dice, but it's kind of a gamble where if you had a reservoir, you'd have enough resin every single time. Like in this D6 here, it had enough, there's no hole, there's enough resin for there to be an excess sprue, but this one had its own problem. You can see this large ledge here where there's excess resin on the top. Well, the ledge is kind of jagged because the dice was cut out of the bottom mold hastily and sloppily, and the ledge is tall because the resin pushes the top lid up because the registration marks are too small and don't keep the top lid locked in place, so it can just float if it needs to. This D8 is a good die to look at because it experiences both problems of not having enough resin in the sprue and having too large a ledge. However, my least favorite thing about all of these molds, and something that I can say I would not buy these molds alone for, is this D12. And it hurts me because the D12 is my favorite. A dodecahedron should have 12 equal sides. You can see here by looking at this 12, it is far smaller than this 8 here. The 12 and 1's place on this die are way smaller and it gives it an almost barrel-like shape rather than a regular dodecahedron. It's horrible. We can fix the sprue issue and a few other things, which I'll do right now, but that D12 is forever going to be unbalanced, so it's not worth it. But if we were to fix things, let me show you how I would make these molds a little bit better a second time. First, I would put some sort of indication for where the keys or registration marks are. That way, if there's resin on the top, you can actually tell where they are. And I would put way more keys and registrations, and they'd be way deeper. I would also add a reservoir to the top if you're going to have a sprue and a cap mold. You want to be able to have something that you can actually put resin into, otherwise this is kind of pointless. So I'm going to cut a small little reservoir into the top of mine just by going into the sprue at an angle. This is what I've done on some of my molds before where I've done cap sprue combos, but there is another issue that comes with this that's unique to their molds, which I'll talk about in a minute. You can see it leaves the bottom side flat and perfect while the top side just gives you a little bit more room to put excess resin that goes down into the die. I'm going to be fair, so I'm going to mix up a second set of resin to try before I move on to UV and give this a shot and see if my improvements made anything a little bit better. We're going to use Mad Mica's Pow Pow Purple, which by the way, they have a great naming convention for all of their mica powders. And first off, let me say something here. This is the coolest shot that I've ever done because watch it how this mixes with the resin. It is absolutely gorgeous. I need to turn this into a desktop wallpaper of sorts and just have it play real slow with some saxophone in the background. If you're telling me you couldn't watch that all day, every day, I'm going to call you a liar. After your mica powder, glitter, etc. of choice is all mixed in, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did in our last step, and in the same order, that way we have a replicatable experiment. So I'm going to pour this in, save I'm not doing three layers because I'm only doing one color this time, pour excess resin on the lid of each of the molds, that way there's going to be no bubbles, go over the top with the lighter so that there's no surface bubbles on any of these, and put them on top. Already having the black lines there from the Sharpie is great because it tells me exactly Exactly where the keys and registration marks are, and you can see that resin is pooling on top perfectly. If there wasn't enough resin on some of these, it's easy to just add some extra resin on the top. However, when I push down on each of these, enough resin came up from the sprue holes that it didn't matter. For a direct comparison, I've also taken some of the resin from this batch and added it to a cap mold that I've made so I can show you what dice should look like when they come out of a cap mold. After the dice have cured, the first thing to note is that none of the dice have any voids or air bubbles in the top, so that's great. Adding the reservoir adds a enough resin to where it stops that problem. The D12 still sucks though, and it's kind of oblong, so I still wouldn't use this set, but that's neither here nor there, and nothing that I can do can really fix that. The problem with adding a reservoir to the top where the sprue is for these cap molds is the lip that they have. Because of the lip, it makes it really hard to get clippers down in there to cut the sprue off, because you do have to cut the sprue off now that there's a reservoir on top. So doing this means you're going to mangle the top of your mold, which is not ideal. Even if the D12 were fine, you still have the problem with the ledges, which means you have to do a ton of sanding to get it straight, and I started noticing that even here on the D6 where you should have really perfect straight edges, the top is kind of curved on some of the corners, which is not great. By comparison, let's take a look at the dice that I made with the same resin with no sprue hole, nothing on it, but using my cap molds that are designed to fix a lot of the problems I talked about in this video. It's got about six keys and registrations where not only can the lid lock itself in place, there's excess resin that the dice itself can take and pull from if needed 
needed. This die here looks perfect. I wouldn't have to sand this D6 at all. Admittedly, that's rare. Often I still have to sand some of the edges on it, but it came out perfect compared to this one, which will take a lot more effort and a lot more work, and it's $45 for a set. With $25, I can get enough silicone to make an entire set of these molds with absolutely zero problems. But let's compare that D6 that's ready to go from mine to what you have to do for post cleanup on all of these. You have to clip the sprue off. You may have to cut some of the flashing off if it's too thick for you to just peel off of these ledges because often flashing is going to be thick when it has ledges that are that large. Not only that, you have to deal with these ledges. You've got to sand them with some decently heavy sandpaper and hope that you don't accidentally round any of your sharp edge corners off or go too deep to where you can't even ink the numbers. All that for these molds to start ripping and tearing at the corners after only two uses. That's really sad. A typical silicone mold should last anywhere from 25 to 100 uses if you take care of it. But I said I was going to test UV resin on it, so I'm going to. I'm going to test some Signature Crafts Purple Light Cure UV Resin and this UV Resin Hard Type Resin from Lumino. It's something I've used in Sophie and Toffee dice molds before, and it worked well then, so let's see if it works well now. I left these out in the sun for three three days so that there was no confusion of if my UV lamp works at curing them, and it seemed to be fine. This purple one here was a little bit soft. I could still kind of scratch it. Maybe that's the nature of UV resin. I'm still not that experienced in it, so I can't say one thing or another. Still got those ledges, nothing you can do about that. And the Lumino hard type resin still kind of came out uncured and sticky, even after three days in the sun. And only with the power of hindsight during editing did I realize I probably shouldn't have been touching that with my bare skin if it was still uncured. But hey, Hindsight is never a skill that I've really shared with people, but what did somebody say Skillshare? Wow, what a good transition, Rybinator. Thank you, kind. If you haven't heard of Skillshare before or been on the internet, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people alike. You can explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, or even just get lost in creativity itself. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. That way you can just stay focused on wherever your creativity is taking you at the time. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Tis the holiday season, and so learning to make something yourself to give somebody as a gift might mean even more than just buying somebody something. That way you can show them that you really love them. Or sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes you just want to get lost in it. Like, some of you may know my life's been pretty hectic lately, and so I've just been wanting to learn to doodle or draw for fun again, and maybe try and make myself a little bit better at it in the process. So I've been taking a few drawing classes myself, like this concept art drawing imaginary worlds by Ira Marks. I like the way he talks about things. He's almost like telling me a story, which I think is really fun because I'm not very good at drawing and doing art, but hey, maybe one day I would be if I watch enough classes. So as a bonus, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. You'd be doing us both a favor by doing so, so why not give it a shot? So back to the video. What do I think and what are my final verdicts for these dice molds. If you've been listening at all, it should be pretty obvious that I don't like them. I think that they're actually worse than their first iteration because they did so many kind of halfway ideas that they didn't really fully go with if they would have done more registrations, more key marks, because I like those. Those are good things. Those are what cap molds should have in them, but they should really be worth something. They should be deeper, they should be stronger, and they should really lock the lid in place, and there should just be more of them. I think that all of these ideas that they had were great, but they really need to just go further with them. As it stands, their first set of molds I thought were even better, and I honestly don't know if it's my fault with the UV or if other people are having problems with UV on these molds as well. So I'll reserve judgment there, but overall, I do not like these molds, and especially with how fragile they are, I just can't in good conscience recommend them. Especially because making your own cap molds doesn't even destroy or damage your own dice, so there's really no downside to it. You can do it cheaper, and you can do it it better than these. No hate on Sophie and Toffee. I think they make great molds. I just don't think that they make great dice molds. With that, thank you so much for watching. If you have a set of these, let me know your experience in the comments down below, or let me know if you still think these are worth buying and that my opinion is absolutely crap. So with that, like the video if you liked it, or dislike it if you think I have a bad opinion. I totally want to hear that as well. Subscribe if you might want to see some more content like this in the future, or if you want to learn how to make your own dice molds, that way you don't have to rely on pre-made dice molds. Please everybody continue to stay safe out there and I hope that you have a fantastic day.